Since the initial build, the modular floppy music setup had a few changes to make it more suitable for live exhibitions and events, so visitors could operate it on their own without me being present. Initially, the main controller was based on an STM32F4 OpenFF board as a USB MIDI interface. This allowed operation as a standard MIDI instrument, but required an operator to be familiar with how it works and manually switching between playback and keyboard mode and loading files to play, so it's not suitable for unsupervised operation. At the last Mega Fair, ST offered me an STM32 MP1 dev kit, and that was actually the perfect solution for a new floppy music controller. The STM32 MP1 is a dual-core ARM processor running Linux with an integrated Cortex-M4 coprocessor like the F4 chip previously used as the MIDI interface. The separate cores of the MP1 can communicate via shared memory, so while a playback application runs in the Linux system, the very latency-sensitive low-level MIDI packet handling, channel distribution and SPI communication can be done very efficiently in the coprocessor and gets fed with MIDI packets from the keyboard or a MIDI file. Previously, I have been using one of these adapter PCBs to connect all the controllers. I have made a new revision for a clean connection for the MP1 board. Basically the same thing, it also has the FF board header again, but also uh, Arduino compatible headers for the Arduino header of the MP1 board. So it can stack on these headers and uh, provide a clean connection. It also again has the uh, CS pin indicator LEDs and uh, also connects the reset line not just to the switch but also to another GPIO pin so I can hardware reset it all uh, from software. Now with the board mounted inside this case, the uh, status and activity LEDs are too far down and you won't be able to see them if the display is mounted. So I'm going to use some of this um, transparent PETG filament as a light guide. And you can see that it goes directly to the LED. So in the end, it should look pretty good when I cut this off. This chip doesn't get very hot, but adding a little heatsink shouldn't hurt. And now before we can screw it in, we have to connect the screen. It should be locked in. The application must automatically switch between keyboard and MIDI playback mode and has to be self-explanatory for users who are not familiar with the system. In the main menu, which is also displayed after a timeout, the user can select between keyboard and jukebox mode. In keyboard mode, you can immediately start playing with the keyboard. In jukebox mode, you can select a song and the system will play a pre-arranged MIDI file automatically. Using micro MIDI parser instead of MIDO was essential for responsive MIDI playback as MIDO would pass a file fully while loading in a very slow way and on this limited hardware this could easily take up to 10 seconds to load a simple MIDI file which is unacceptable. Micro MIDI parser is optimized for slower hardware and almost fully compatible with how MIDO parses files 
and it can pass MIDI blocks on demand, so there is almost no delay when opening a song. In the build video I mentioned that I'm using Meanwell MDR60 power supplies which can... Uh, I did notice some voltage drops, so I am now probing the right side of 32 drives with the oscilloscope. The yellow trace is voltage, the pink one is the current. And I already have increased the voltage quite a bit from 5 to 5.5 volts. With a high note, we see around 10 to 11 amps. And it is dropping a bit to 4.7 volts, but when I play a very low note, we see over 12 amps. And the voltage drops below 4.5. One odd thing I noticed while testing all the drives is that actually all the Mitsumi drives I had in this system, and in total I had eight of them, they would suddenly stop moving after being idle for some time. Initially after powered up and when playing a song, they are working perfectly fine. And just after a while, maybe they have some kind of standby function I'm not sure, usually they should just be enabled by the enable pin, which all the other drives do, but the Mitsumis, the motors just stop moving sometimes. And uh, the enable LEDs, they are still on and blinking, they are just not making any sound, which is of course something I do not want to have in a music setup. So I had to take the system apart, uh, it's a little bit difficult with it all bolted together, so uh, yeah, you can loosen these nuts and slide it apart a bit. It still took a long time. I've replaced the drives, now they are all running as they should. Thanks to all supporters on Patreon making this project possible and to the Highscore Arcade and Games Museum for giving it some action. If you want to see it live, you might find it at a Maker Fair in Germany or the Highscore Hanover while it is still there.